So before we dive into the real differences between PHP and JavaScript and start writing a little PHP application that we can convert and compare to how JavaScript would do it, I just want to make sure that you're as comfortable running your PHP code on your local machines as you are running JavaScript code on your local machines. So, you know, as we start actually diving into the code and writing it and playing with it and testing it, it's important that you're able to actually run it on your machine in a way that makes sense. So here in my editor, I've got my main PHP JS folder that I'll be writing all my code in. Um, all of this code will end up in the master branch of my GitHub repository, and that repo is linked in the notes for this video series. So you can check it out at any time, or if you want, uh, you can just follow along and do what I do as I'm doing it, and then you can compare it to the code that's in the GitHub repo at the end. So in my PHP.js folder, I'm going to create a new folder called PHP so I can segment everything I do. And then in there, I'll just make an example that PHP file. So if you're trying to run code on your server, oftentimes you're passing it through to a web server. And since that's what our application that we're going to build is going to do, we're not going to really deal with how we're going to get web servers running. I'll show you that later for both PHP and for JavaScript. But if you just want to run some PHP code, so let's say we had an echo statement that said hello from PHP. If I wanted to run this code, I would jump into terminal and I would simply just type uh, PHP and then the path to that file. So it was in a PHP folder, example.php. And here's my string. So we're familiar probably with running code in a file. Uh, the other way you can do it is if you do PHP A, you enter this interactive shell, which is kind of like a REPL, which means you get instant feedback. So if I wanted to say x equals 1, 2, 3. And I can echo x out and get the value back. So you can see how you could do something quick and just experiment with what does array reduce do again? You know, and you can do that here and have a little sandbox to just test things that are temporary. So let's take a look at how these two things, running files and then writing code that gives you instant feedback. How do we do that in JavaScript? So let's take this instant feedback thing first. If we go to a browser. Here I'm in Chrome, but uh, Firefox and Safari and Opera and even Internet Explorer, the newer versions, have something very similar to what I'm about to show you. I'm sure you've probably seen this where if you right click on the page and choose inspect element, you end up with this web developer console. There's all kinds of different things here. If you click on the console, um, I've got mine uh, zoomed in here so you can see it. And I can do var x equals one, two, three. And you can see it's saying that what returned there was undefined. And this is what the PHP REPL doesn't do. It doesn't give you that feedback of what is exactly returned from every statement. So it's kind of nice. OK, when I assign something, nothing is actually returned. Uh, but if I type x, the value of x is 1, 2, 3. Now if I refresh the page and then hit x, x is not defined because on refresh, we've actually lost everything that we built. And so you can see this is not a good thing for actually trying to build some code. It's great for a quick uh, demo or trying to understand how the language works. Now, if we want to run files in the server, we're going to have to do something a little better than this. So this is where Node comes in, because Node's going to allow us to run JavaScript on the server. If we go to nodejs.org, close the developer console there. It's a big install button that most of you should just be able to click and get it installed if you don't already have it. Uh, if you want more control, you can click on download and you can choose the exact download method that you want. Once you have it installed, coming back to terminal, we're going to just get rid of this and exit. Uh, now we can enter the node version of a REPL by just typing in the word node. And hitting enter and now we're in a node REPL. And so again here I can say x, sorry, I'm going to be var x equals 1, 2, 3. It gives us that feedback immediately, saying that's undefined. Nothing comes back from that assignment. Uh, but if I type x, I get the value. And if I type x plus 4, I get the value that is returned from that statement. So this is really nice for getting some code, uh, just kind of understanding what a function does, trying to figure out why you don't understand why a certain statement isn't working the way you expect. But it's no good for actually trying to build something and seeing how like more complex things interact with each other. In that case, you need a file. And so as you can imagine, 
Uh, if we get out of here with node, it's control C twice to get out of its REPL, which is a funny little quirk. Um, but we're gonna make a new directory from the terminal this time. Uh, we're gonna make JS, and then we'll touch a JS example file. Oh, .js, not .php. All right, so in our JS folder, we have our example file here. And in here, we can just say, uh, we can't say echo because there's no echo function in JavaScript. So to get the same effect for our files, we're gonna use console.log just like we do in the browser, except it's gonna to log to standard out instead of to the browser's console. So again, we can from here say hello from JavaScript. Very creative. And back in the terminal, we can run this file by typing node JS example.js and it runs our string. So we can see how we can run code that's sitting on a file on the server directly from the command line. And you can hopefully see how we'll build upon that to take those files and actually serve them with a web server. So in our next video, we'll actually start building this PHP application. It'll be very simple. Uh, use the web server and start showing some code. And we'll build on that by comparing and contrasting that throughout the rest of the series to how we would build a similar thing with JavaScript. Let's get started.